At this point, we know NFL defenses are really honing in on not letting offenses throw the ball down the field. And when we target Patrick Mahomes in the Chiefs offense, we see that become even more prevalent in the way that they play defense. So adding explosive players with speed, with acceleration that can take advantage of holes created underneath by other players and space created by Travis Kelsey, Rasheed Rice, and now Hollywood Brown. It makes a lot of sense to want to continue that philosophy, guys that can continue to create 20 plus yard plays or those explosives underneath with their ability to get up to speed fast. And we talked about explosivity on the RGR channel, the RGR live on Mondays, a Q and a about our definitions of explosive. This player for me that I'm going to break down for you guys today is almost the pure definition of explosivity. And we're going to talk about Xavier Leggett today on the RGR football channel. My name is Daniel Harms, senior film analyst. And today, like I said, we are going to talk about an explosive playmaker. So if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that sub button, hit that bell to make sure you hit, get every single video and every update that we do here at RGR. And then allow me to earn a like from you guys from this film review. So let's talk a little bit about this playmaker from South Carolina. Yes, he's a fifth year senior. The COVID year does throw some things off for this draft class and a couple more to come actually because of how it delayed their ability to come out. But he's 6'1". 221 pounds, nine inch hands, 31, nearly 32 inch arms. And he uses his length, his size, his, his ability to be able to be physical in every aspect of his game. He ran a four, three, nine at the 40. You see his speed on tape, you know, one, five, four, 10 yard split is 100% prevalent. He does get up there pretty quickly, a 40 inch vertical and nearly an 11 broad. So this guy has got an explosive lower half. And not only did he test very well, it shows in his background, uh, the different ways that he's an athlete. He played baseball. You know, he, he has like 39 stolen bases. He's, I got these facts from Russell Brown, one of my, my favorite followers on Twitter. You guys can follow him at Russ NFL Draft. And like I said, he played baseball, had 39 stolen bases. He played basketball. He played power forward and shooting forward. And then, you know, his senior year, he played quarterback for them. And he rushed for 1,826 yards and 19 touchdowns. This was as a high school senior, if that makes a little bit more sense. And then last year, he finally broke out with over 1,200 yards. It was the first time in his career that he had over 30 targets in a season. So, He's got some proving to do to not just NFL play uh, staff members, but to himself. He has a lot of growth that he needs to go through as well. So let's go ahead and jump in and break down Xavier Leggett because what I think really makes an impact on him in this draft class and why he's such an interesting player is because of the, the different ways that he's he broke out last year. And when we have raw players that are still learning the game of football but they're athletes they're physical they're fast they can do a lot of different things for an offense and then they have natural ability he has a natural ability to find the football to elevate to explode up through the air and catch the football at its high highest point here with someone around him this is it's not innate for everybody he has that quick reaction time, the ability to track the football in close and tight spaces. And then even though there's a guy undercutting him on this route, taking away the possibility from getting his hands, eyes on it, he comes through, makes the catch here. Now, obviously he doesn't get two feet inbounds because in college football, you only need one. But he's focused on the football, getting out here. One of the things that I also did like was his, his stem, his route stem. He's kind of got an outside leverage defender so he's going to release inside and this db is going to move with him and then he's going to come back to the outside and then break on this route to the out but i like i said what i liked about it is the physical right here the physical nature just push him up the field and keep going through his route he's not the most refined release and stem player he just isn't he's still learning a lot of that and when it comes to the releases he is a I'm going to get zero to hundred as fast as I can. And then he doesn't really do a ton of speed dilation. And for those of you that don't know, speed dilation is how you mix up the different speeds in your releases and your stems. You can, you don't have to go hundred percent all the time, but it is nice to see the 100% speed acceleration on players, but also have in your bag, the ability to just dial it down a little bit. 
lull some of these corners and safeties and DBs to sleep, and then accelerate through. So he's got to work on that from a release standpoint, some stem manipulation he does have in his game. That was the wrong player that I just highlighted. My apologies. He's down here at the bottom of your screen. I'm used to him playing on the outside because he does play everywhere. And for South Carolina, he lined up in the backfield. He lined up out wide as an X, as a Z, in the slot, in stacks, all types of different places because he's such a unique playmaker that they wanted to get him the football. And he didn't come into the year as South Carolina's number one receiver. Their number one receiver actually went down with an injury. And then he was asked to step up and he took the mantle. What what I'm showing you here is you, you've got a stack formation and he's going to have an inside stem release. He doesn't get all the way horizontal in this release package. So he releases to the inside and then he's should be asked to get like vertical and sell vertical with his shoulders and his head 100% parallel to you know the lines on the field in my opinion I would like to see that a little bit more he was a little closer to this where he was still moving in the direction that he's going to end up breaking and you see that on his tape a little bit where he's at the top of his route, he doesn't necessarily square his shoulders to give the idea of a two-way go, but he breaks off the corner here with that number 18 going down the field for the defense, and then you see him reduce angles. This corner is actually in a pretty good spot after here to break off. He flattens this down, still getting downfield a little bit. His ball is going to be put on a good spot, and then he just takes off down the field reducing that angle that you have. This is a good angle. He catches the ball now. There's like a yard, two yards from the corner to the sideline here, and he just, whoop, he's by him. He's able to keep his balance. I think he toes the line pretty good here, Has you know having that sideline awareness, body control, to be able to stay up at the sideline with someone trying to push him out and or tackle him. So you see all of that, and again, we see you know hands. He, he attacks the football, brings it in, and then gets downfield. You guys can see how big he is, and I, I know there are going to be some questions with his abilities and his rawness, but he's kind of like a raw A.J. Brown in the sense that that's the kind of player you're looking for, a big-bodied receiver that does a lot of damage in vertical and over the middle of the field areas, and I think that that's the best usage of him right now, especially in Kansas City. If you're going to have... Rasheed Rice do a lot of the yards after catch stuff with, you know, slants and bubbles and, and all that kind of stuff. You could have Hollywood Brown come in, take the top off, and use Xavier Leggett in Kansas City as that dig route player who, you know, like like Sammy Watkins was used in, in the Super Bowl when they, you know, he had that great dig route on Jet Chip Wasp where you saw the, D, the DB bite on it so hard because he sold it so well. And then you, you see... The Chiefs throw the football down the field to Terry Kill on that corner route based uh built off of it. So I think he has that type of upside in this offense and the way that he's used. And he can be used as a vertical threat as well. With that four, three, nine speed, look, he just pulls away from this guy at the end. What I liked about this route is that one, you see that on the defensive side. There is nobody down here. So Spencer Rattler just has to look here and back here a little bit to see where if there are any safeties and they're too busy rotating down. So he's going to take a shot here. This player is one-on-one -on -one with Xavier Leggett. And if you're one-on-one -on -one and you're not getting hands on him, you are probably toast. And that's exactly what happened here. He plays this well. We do see a little bit of the speed dilation that I was talking about. When he stacks the corner, watch as he slows down slightly right here. He's looking for the football. His eyes are back now already, back to the football. He's looking up this way, and he's going to slow a little bit into contact with that corner. If you, as a wide receiver, create contact at the stack point, most of the time, that DB will end up looking for the football, looking over his shoulder for the football. And because Xavier has ex acceleration and speed right here, he's going to separate late route separation because he knows where the football is and that db does not that's where the db takes a peek behind him and after that he slowly you know reaches his hands out he has to kind of basket catch this because he's selling that deep route and that acceleration a little bit much it's tad under under thrown and it's misplayed a tad but he's able to then go go get the football so i liked 
I wanted to point this out because I think it's important to see the different ways that you can win vertically. And he's, I think he's a, a much more nuanced catch point vertical player than he gets credit for because he can make guys do what he wants to do down the field too. I think he's got some ability like we see with T Higgins and Jamar Chase to naturally to just not extend all the way with his hands, but still create separation downfield as well. So I, I like what he offers from a speed perspective because he has a ton of it. And then you get plays like this, the exact opposite. You're going to sell vertical and then decelerate deceleration off of the hip sync is very, very important when you're selling a curl route. He's attacking the feet right here. This is a second down, you know, second and what? 10-ish, around 10. And you're just trying to get a first down. And what I liked about this is that he's, again, going to attack the feet. If you can sell vertical, you can keep those shoulders square. You can keep your head square. Make this cornerback believe that you are going. So he's going to go too. That's how you can create separation and do what I say, you know, what I call pressing send. We, 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 we all remember the... The famous Herm Edwards clip of him saying, don't press send. But I've used that as my do press send as a wide receiver. Because right here, again, he's going to sell vertical. And what I mean by attacking the feet, he's going to keep closing his closing the gap here until he's nearly on the feet of that DB. And then he's going to break down. And he's going to come back to the football. And then the, the hip sync is really, really nice. He, excel, he decelerates quickly. It's not doesn't take a ton of steps for him to do that. He does have that in his wheelhouse. I think that his hips could be a little looser on a lot of his routes, but he is still learning. So you don't see a ton of the, the hip fluidity that I have thought about earlier in the process, but he's got that hip sync to him with the deceleration, the quick deceleration that I think is very attractive. So here he's motioning from left to right. And like I said earlier in this film review, he's moved all around he plays on the outside he plays in the slot they do him a ton on jet sweeps motions from left to right he's usually their travis kelsey guy in the sense that he's motioning to identify man coverage versus zone coverage for spencer rattler tons of motions moving around the formation so here's a third down play that i i wanted to highlight because i think that this is exactly the kind of play out of the slot that you can do that the, the fact that he's able to play in so many unique situations and he's tough after the catch too. Like he's a tough guy to bring down. And this is where that hip drop tackle kind of comes in. I hate that they banned it. Um, it's going to be really hard to talk about in terms of referee play style. How are they going to identify it? But right here, this is a really nice job of selling manipulation and then coming back into space where he was about to head. So this looks like it's supposed to be a little bit of an extended whip route where he comes back around here and the ball gets thrown behind the space he's going into so if you watch at the top of the route here it looks like he's about to work his way back and he has to find that football because it's coming to where he stopped a little bit of a miscommunication here with the quarterback and the wide receiver i think rattler threw this because he thought he was coming back to the football immediately um which he's open he's, he's obviously open here on third down so you want to complete that so he has to xavier has to come back to the football and then he, he's tough really really tough after the catch to bring down so <clears throat> it's it's nice to see that manipulation so he stems it to the outside cuts back to the inside that corner has to then whip back around just kind of have to come back around here to see where uh, excuse me where Leggett went to then he stops and this is where i liked the idea of getting out here right of coming into this space right here because this third down it would create a little bit more space for him to then perhaps i don't know catch it and turn and run like the idea that he's got in his head is i'm going to take this out and i'm going to throw or i'm, I'm going to run into space and then carry it up field probably try and get a touchdown here but you know Third down, Rattler's trying to get the ball out. I get it. He comes back to the football, catches it, still completes it for a first down. So that was something I liked to see with the space play. I think he can identify space pretty decently. It's just inconsistent. And we're going to talk about that here in just a second. But the, the toughness is something that we're going to we're gonna see uh, in, through multiple clips in this, in this breakdown. He's a very, like I said, very tough guy, very unique find. I'm, I know that he had some injury concerns at the Senior Bowl, left with an injury on day two right here. He wore this for most of his season, this leg sleeve on his, his left 
calf. And personally, I'm not sure why he wore it the whole season. Maybe it was more of an aesthetic thing. Maybe he really just likes it. And then he just got hurt at the senior bowl. But I think he came in with an injury. But this is one of the concerns that I have. The zone feel. And I believe it's a coachable aspect for wide receivers. You guys look at Rasheed Rice, who I would argue was not one of the best zone players coming out of college last year, mostly because he wasn't really asked to do it. But we're going to see this defender right here drop out. Number 19 is going to come out here. And then they're going to play a little bit of Tampa too, where this defender comes down here into the middle of the field. And then you've got the two deep safeties out here. Um, and what I wanted to see, because you can see that it's happening right in front of him. So eyes should be here, especially with the movement of the, the safeties and the, the DBs around him. I would have liked to see him stop right here after this guy, after he clears him, stop right here. And instead, he keeps going into coverage. He's going to keep running this into coverage. And if you're just stopping right here after you clear that player, you know you're in zone because of the, how he's dropping into this. And he's coming right into your peripheral vision. So I think some of his zone feel needs work. You saw right there at the end, he does try to get work back into it, which is always a good thing. But initially right here, once you see that DB or that, that got linebacker backing out and into a zone, Right here, he needs to get on the brakes and come downhill, especially right here on third down. Could have been an outlet for his quarterback right there. He stops at the first down, and the drive continues instead. Spencer Rattler has to make something happen with his legs, and he, he comes up just short of a first down. And again, we're talking about third downs. Third down conversion rate wasn't fantastic for Xavier Leggett last year. And it's not all his fault. There's some ball placement, some offensive scheme problems. And honestly, wide receiver spacing that I found a ton to be really, really bad in South Carolina. But right here, it's the, the press man coverage. The press is not his friend. You see, he does work through it. And his ability with those releases that we've talked about, the, the, the need to have a different tool in that toolbox is apparent. Instead of using his hands or using his feet to create a little bit of space for himself. He just bowls through the guy and it, it throws off timing. It throws off pacing and everything like that in his routes. And as, guy, as a guy who doesn't have a ton of nuance to how he's going to set these corners up with the release packages and his hand usage and press, that is an area that I, I definitely think needs. It, it's, it's a concern. I, I think that this is, we, we can say that it's a concern here, especially on third down. When you're trying to get open, eventually he comes loose, but you need to be able to be available to your quarterback quickly. And if you're just going to sit here and try and bowl through guys and not use your hands and use a different release package, there are concerns there, but there's a lot of growth for him. And he's a, a high upside play. One of the things that I liked, because you, you, at uh, you know South Carolina, you get to play against the SEC and you get to play against some of these really good corners. And here... He's going against Nate Wiggins, one of the best physical corners in the in the in the draft class. When I when I mean physical, is that he's a really good athlete and he can match and mirror and defend very well. He can come in out of his, out of his breaks quickly. And one of the things that I really want to harp on with Xavier Leggett for a guy who is explosive at the top of his route, he can be slow. So he's going to do actually a good job here of breaking when Wiggins is coming and opening up to the inside, but instead of accelerating through that break, he kind of walks through it. So here's a, here it is at full speed. It, it's rounded. It's it's a long break. It's, a, it's, it's not what I want to see. And then he drifts upfield. I know that this is, it appears to be getting Spencer Rattler out of the pocket on purpose, uh, but if you flatten this down the line and if it's not supposed to be him getting out of the pocket on purpose, then we, we see a little bit of a, of a difference. If Spencer Rattler stays in the pocket here, he stays in this pocket, and you have Xavier Leggett come out here on this lazy break, the ball can't be thrown there because it'll get picked off by the trailing DB. Luckily, the angle that created from him getting out of the pocket was good, and then you see him catch the football with his hands and get open. So, a couple of things that he does need to work on, accelerating out of his breaks, man coverage, press man coverage, get using hands, 
better, getting off of press a little bit better, and then the release packages are all there. One thing I will say is that even with his problems against press coverage, he had 3.8 yards per route run, which was third among all draft-eligible wide receivers in this class. And he also led the class against man coverage in yards per route run at four yards. So he has the physical tools to get open and the speed. He's mostly winning with his pure athleticism right now. And in the NFL, that's not always going to be the best way to win. But at the end of the day, what does matter is landing spot for these raw physical athletes. And that's one thing we can say with a bullet about Xavier Leggett is that he is a pure athlete. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Look at this ridiculous just ability that he has. I think that he locates the football as well as anybody in this class, and he can do it quickly. Obviously, this ball is coming out now. He's got to go and get that. And then the extension right here is nuts. He doesn't have like 34-inch arms. He has nearly 32-inch arms, but he knows how to use it, and he knows how to attack the football. He has strong hands. He doesn't need 10-inch hands. He has 9-inch hands, and he can just cl clutch the football. He had four drops last year, and I would put quite a few of them on ball placement near the ground, up and away like this, where he probably should catch it, but there's a good reason he didn't. And this is one of those, another one of those uh, problems that I saw. This is third down, and that ball should have been thrown out in front of him, where he could then turn the corner and run for a first down, but he was unable to because of the ball location. And I like Spencer Rattler. So there's a lot of inconsistencies in his game that led to Xavier Leggett not being even as productive as he was as a senior last year. So just an insane athlete ball skills. And that's something that I know we talk about in Kansas City a little bit differently because they don't use downfield apex catching wide receivers. It's an it's a cherry on top in Kansas City because you can scheme him him in him into space and you can scheme him on dig routes and you can use the other players around him as the fourth option in Kansas City that maybe turns into the third option after Hollywood Brown leaves, that is a very attractive place for a raw athletic player who, again, does win a lot in the SEC based off that pure athleticism. But there is some nuances to his game, and there are some things that he does well. And we talked about the physicality. We saw him get open late against that press jam against Georgia. Here he is blocking. Andy Reid would love this kind of physical torque ability. I love this kind of play too. When I see, I usually highlight one of these on any wide receiver that I that I watch that has a physical outing as a blocker. I try to highlight that, if not in my own notes, for you guys when I do the film breakdown. So I love this will, want, and physical nature that he is and can be as a blocker you bring that into kansas city as an x receiver yes i project him to be an x in the nfl because of the physical nature and the way that he can win off of speed and even though he does need some nuanced work to him again he, he played them predominantly on the outside for south carolina last year and led the uh, country in yards against man coverage so a yards per route run against man coverage, and that's not easy to do. This the just the different speed that he has. I mean, look at where he catches this football, and I want you to just kind of guess what happens here. Bye. <laughs> it's it's pure unadulterated breakaway speed, and that is a lot of fun to think about in Kansas City. And this is nothing but a a delayed release slant. That's all it is, and we see this happen in Kansas City too. Delayed releases that are based off of timing against man coverage, and boom. Ball thrown a little bit low, so he catches it near his, his body, and then he goes. There's a lot to work with in Xavier Leggett, and I understand that there's going to be some people that aren't fans of his game, and I, and I get it, especially his analytical profile. It's not good. I believe 17 targets was the most he saw in a season before 2023. It's not easy to come into the NFL without a ton of production and just be a dude. Trust me, I understand it. But he's a physical, big-bodied player at 6'1", 
that mirrors a lot of what A.J. Brown can do or that prototype of receiver. He doesn't have to be A.J. Brown. He can be a tear down or even grow into a tear down. But right now, he shouldn't and won't be asked in Kansas City to be the number one guy. So, a lot to work with. Physical tools are there. Really good hands. He's got that breakaway speed that you're looking for. He's explosive. I have some questions, again, about his ability against press man coverage to sit down in those zones. That, that's something that we saw Rasheed Rice get better at as the year went on in Kansas City last year. So, it's coachable in Kansas City. Um, and then we have the release packages and hand usage that I do think he needs to work on. So unrefined, explosive playmakers find ways to make plays in the NFL. Elite tier athletes with the ability to make guys miss or force guys to miss because of the way they play the game and to reduce those angles are valuable. And I think in Kansas City where offenses or this offense has to play with the space underneath that's provided and every now and then take a shot down the field. He's a player that can open up and take advantage of that space. We talk about taking advantage of space all the time in Kansas City because they need those type of players. And I do think that the X slash Z slash slot ability usage, being able to be moved around the formation as much as he did, plays well in Kansas City because we see that all the time with guys having to learn all three positions and plus having some flexibility. He's also a pretty good kick returner, and we just saw the kick return rules get changed, and that would be an interesting you know, little dash of sprinkle to put in there. He probably can return some punts too. So a lot of versatility as a player, and I love that in Xavier Leggett. He's one of my favorite wide receiver prospects just because of the upside that he brings in this draft class and in a draft that does have some lighter players in like Troy Franklin and Xavier Worthy. In the end of the at the end of the first round, I think is able to get offers a lot of upside and ability to grow as a player in the NFL in this offense. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina. He's he's not gonna be for everybody, and I get that. I just wanted to showcase what I think he does well and how he can actually be used in Kansas City and get to the extent of what he could be as a player. So if you really are new to the channel make sure to hit that sub button and i hope i was able to earn a like from you guys getting through here breaking down xavier uh Leggett. and you guys have yourselves a fantastic rest of your week ryan myself are working hard on the draft guide we've got everything going that we can we'll bring as much content to you throughout the week and we'll keep you guys up to date with all the chiefs news that continues to drop as we get closer to the nfl draft make sure you have a fantastic week